So, hello everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Enrique Inouye. Is this working? <laughs> okay, oh, sorry. Okay, so, <laughs> back again. So, my name is Enrique Inouye. I'm a software developer at CodeMinder42. And today I'll be talking about concurrent React, right? So, okay, so we'll start uh, by drawing our attention to user interfaces. So, user interfaces, they are composed of many different parts. Uh, some parts are very fast in terms of how quick they respond to user interactions, while others can be quite slow and may take a considerable amount, amount of time to update. So if we take things like uh, input fields, buttons, menus, sliders, these are examples of the fast parts. Uh, on the other hand, when we think of things like uh, filtering a huge list, updating a dashboard, uh, recalculating cells in a spreadsheet, or performing navigations, these are examples of the slow parts. So, Whenever you have both fast parts and slow parts in the same user interface, which is pretty much always, right? The problem is that the fast parts, they get coupled to the slow parts, in the sense that the slow parts, they drag down the responsivity of the fast parts. And to showcase this very concept, uh, I just uh, came up with a little demo here. So there's a bunch of stuff you see here, so let me explain uh, part by part. So uh, at first, notice that we have some examples of the fast parts. So we have like a button, a text input, a slider, and at first, when we interact with these fast parts, notice that they respond to our interactions uh, instantly. There's no delay at all. Uh, but also at the very bottom of this component list, we also have a slow component that's being represented by the turtle, the little turtle here, and also the checkered flag. And this component has been slowed down artificially. And whenever we click the Start Rendering button, it starts rendering. And it only stops rendering, it only finishes rendering when we click the Finish Rendering button. So uh, right now, I won't go into details of how like, this slow component works, because it involves some like, uh, ancient magic. But if you're curious, you can come talk to me to break to find out. But uh, going back to the demo, uh, the one thing I wanted to notice is that once we start rendering this slow component, the entire user interface just freezes. Like, notice that uh, even though we have some fast parts, like the button, the text, input, the slider, when we're rendering the slow component, uh, they, cannot, they cannot respond at all. The only thing that keeps on working, as you might have noticed, is the CSS animation, but it only keeps on working because it takes place on the GPU. But everything else gets completely frozen until this low component finishes rendering. Now, the main takeaway here is that no matter how fast your whole user interface is, it only takes a single slow component to slow down your entire UI. Now, let's understand like, why this is the case, right? So, the reason why this happens is because the default uh, approach React uses for rendering in most situations, which also for many UI frameworks is the only approach available, is to render things synchronously. So with synchronous rendering, once React starts rendering an update, it will run to completion, completely blocking the main thread. So uh, in practice, this means that it doesn't matter how long the render takes to complete. Any user interactions that take place during this render will have to wait for it regardless of how fast or urgent responding to them would be. So uh, with that in mind, the problem is that like, this is what causes the slow components to get coupled with the fast components. Because whenever you start uh, rendering a slow component, you cannot respond to the fast components, right? But what if there, were, there was actually a way to decouple the fast parts from the slow parts? What if there was a way to let each part respond to user interaction at its own pace? So enter concurrent React. Uh, before we actually dive in of in how like concurrent React works and how we can uh, actually use it to to dis make this decoupling happen, I just want to make uh, ju just want to show you what it looks like from a user experience perspective uh, when we actually use concurrent rendering. Right. So first we have that same demo we saw before. Uh, it's pretty much the same demo. It has the same slow component, but notice that now, even though we're still rendering that very same slow component. Uh, the whole user interface does not freeze anymore. We can still uh, keep interacting with it. Uh, also, I'm going to show you two more examples. This first one is a navigation example. So it has a sidebar. It has like the, the page. And we're like transitioning to different pages in the application. Uh, and, and in the synchronous version, the sidebar gets blocked by this page transitions. And in the concurrent version, this just doesn't happen anymore, right? It, it works precisely as you would expect. Uh, we also have a, a list filtering example where we have like a, a normals list. Uh, and notice that in the synchronous version, the input field gets blocked by this, the, the list filtering. But when we use the concurrent rendering version, it just doesn't block it anymore. Uh, OK, so now let's understand a little bit of the, the, the big, bigger concept behind concurrent React, because now you're probably wondering, how does this all work, right? 
Uh, and first, well, concurrent React, it introduces two new, concept, two new features to rendering. Uh, the first one is interruptibility, and the second one is prioritization. So interruptibility is about being able to stop a render halfway through to do other things, and then coming back to it later. Interrupt, uh, prioritization is about rendering the most important things first. And when you combine both of them, uh, React can start rendering something like the slow component we saw in the demo. And then if anything more important, more urgent happens, like, I don't know, like having to respond to the fast parts of the UI, we can like, stop what we're doing, cater to these more urgent renders. And once we're done with those, we can go back to what we're doing before. And to do this, React allows us to mark renders as uh, either high priority or low priority. And before we uh, dive into what, what exactly these mean, I just want to make a quick disclaimer that actually we have uh, more than two priority levels, but for most purposes in user land, collapsing them into two levels suffices. Now, high priority renders, uh, they work pretty much like React uh, pre-18, uh, so like they are synchronous, they are blocking, they cannot be interrupted, but uh, in this, this, this concurrent React setting, they are also able to interrupt low priority renders. Low priority renders, on the other hand, they are no blocking, they are synchronous, they can be interrupted, and they only start running after we've finished all the high priority work. So uh, just for us to actually understand what this means, uh, I think it, it's, it's useful to come up with a Git analogy. So let's say that we're working in an application, and you're using Git to track its code base, right? This is pretty common. I think everybody here uh, does that. So we have the main branch, which uh, represent, represents the code that's in production. And whenever you want to write a new feature, you branch off main, uh, you like do some work, and once you're done with that, you merge it back to main. So now let's say uh, that there's some recollection production, then you're gonna follow, you're gonna go with the hotfix uh, workflow, right? So, which is pretty much the same. You just branch off main, you do your work, once it's done, you merge it back to main. Now, I wanted to consider what happens uh, if you're working on some, some, some feature branch, but in the middle of your work, you suddenly notice that there's a critical issue in production, right? Uh, when that happens, uh, definitely, like, if we think about it, solving this critical issue in production is definitely more urgent, more important than actually uh, uh, finishing this feature work for the time being. So supposing you're the only developer working on the project, what you have to do if that happens is that you have to interrupt your feature work, you have to work on the hotfix, and only after uh, you're done with the hotfix is that you can go back to finish the feature work. So this is pretty much how concurrent React works, you know? Uh, and if you've been paying attention, you can probably see how the analogy like, maps out to uh, the, the concepts we just saw before. So uh, we have the main branch with equates to DOM to you actually see on the screen. We have feature branches which are not as important as hotfixes, which equates to low priority renders. And we also have hotfixes which must be dealt with right away that correspond to high priority renders, right? Uh, so once we have these concepts in mind, the key to decouple the fast parts from the slow parts is, is pretty simple. We just need to uh, assign high priority rendering uh, uh, for rendering the fast parts and a low priority for rendering the slow parts. Once we do that, whenever we start rendering a slow part we can, uh, and we need to respond to the fast parts, we can just interrupt that render, right? Uh, now I want to talk about, a little bit about concurrent features because uh, we, all, we saw all these concepts, but now we're going to see how we can apply them in practice, right? And to do that, we're going to go back to the examples we saw before. So first, uh, the first thing we need to know about concurrent features is that when, when do we do not use any concurrent features, uh, all renders uh, are considered to be high priority renders. So they are not interruptible, they are blocking. So in this case, this is the same example we saw before, the, the page navigation example. And notice that we're not using any concurrent features here. We're pretty much using a play node use state, right? And because of that, all uh, renders that are caused uh, by updates to this state, they are considered to be high priority renders. So they are blocking, and this is why the sidebar gets that's frozen whenever we are navigating away to a different page. But now, when we start using concurrent features, and in this case, we're using, uh, we, we basically have two new elements here. First, we have a new state that's going to track this uh, that's going to be used to inform the, these low priority renders, but we also have this use transition. So I cannot uh, go into like how exactly use uh, transition works, but the important bit is that when, whenever we update a state inside the start transitions callback, uh, the render that is caused by this state update 
is considered to be a low priority render, which means it is interruptible. This is why, uh, notice that now we're passing this delayed page to the main component. And because of that, even though like, it takes quite a while for the page to, like, to, to navigate away, uh, the sidebar can remain responsive. Now, let's go to uh, yet another example, the list filtering one. So we have the same situation. At first, we're not using any concurrent features. This is why uh, our text input gets blocked. And now in the second version, we're use, using the first value. Now, use the first value, is, even though it has a different API from uh, use transition, it works pretty much the same way. So whenever we pass uh, a new value to like, use the first value, we're going to cause uh, a re-render. But this re-render is going to be considered a low priority re-render. So notice that now we're still passing like filter to, uh, to the input field, but now we're passing the third filter to the future list. And this is what makes, uh, this is what keeps the interface responsive, right? And now let's dive in a little bit deeper in how this uh, whole rendering lifecycle works. So uh, here we have the same example as before, but notice that on the right side, we actually have uh, a console. And we're going to be showing, we're going to be logging to this console whenever we start rendering. We finish rendering, and whenever th these renders get interrupted. So uh, let's see step by step how this works. So, at first, we type the first letter age, right, in the future. And when we do that, because we're, we're using set state to set the future, this is causing a high priority update. So, uh, this, and this is this high priority update uh, it render. The future has, like, it's up to date, but the third future is not. Notice that the deferred future still has its, like, uh, old value, the initial value, which is just an empty string. Now, uh, as we said before, as we saw before, like low priority renders then only start after high priority renders have finished. So now that our, our high priority render has finished, uh, we can start doing the low priority render. And in this low priority render, both future and the first future are with the most up to date state. But uh, the thing that happens is that before we can actually finish this low priority render, we type yet another letter, in this case, the letter O. And when we do that, because we're using set state, which, is like, uh, which causes a high priority render, uh, this low priority render is interrupted, and we go back to the high priority render, right? So it's basically the same thing. We finish the high priority render, and after that, we can uh, start the low priority render again. But this time, we can actually finish this, the low priority render before we type uh, another letter. And because of that, UI gets updated accordingly. And we keep doing that, so on and so forth, until we finish the process. So I think this, this kind of uh, showcases how this, this whole like, high priority and low priority renders work in practice. And well, with all that in mind, I think it's just very important to, to like, uh, uh, keep in mind that you know, like, probably you're, you're all thinking, OK, so concurrent React is, is very nice. It allows us to uh, make sure that renders not block right, the main thread. So we should probably use concurrent features for everything. Uh, well, actually, no, because uh, the thing is, if you assign, like, if you use concurrent features for everything, you're just basically saying that everything has a low priority, right? And if everything has a low priority, it just basically means that there's no priority at all. So uh, and it would basically end up with the same problem we had before, because like, without concurrent features, it just uh, uh, happens that all renders are considered to be high priority. This is why like, everything blocks anything else. So, our jobs as developers uh, to work with concurrent feature properly is to be able to like, identify which parts are fast, which parts are slow, and then we assign uh, priorities accordingly, right? Also, uh, one, one other thing I would like to talk about is, is, is just that uh, it's important to keep in mind that concurrent React will not necessarily make your application faster, but you definitely make it feel faster, it may make it feel more responsive. And, Sometimes this is even more important than actually like making your application faster. Like, of course, if we could make our applications as fast as we wanted, like there would be no problems at all, right? But many times we we like there's only so much we can do in terms of how uh, optimized we can make our applications. So uh, if we cannot make our applications like uh, lightning fast, the second best best thing we can do as uh, developers is to make sure we deliver a great user experience. And I think Concurrent React allows us to do that by, being, uh, by making sure we can keep our applications responsive. So that is all I, have, I had for today. Uh, also, like, there's a post that I wrote that dives in uh, much deeper in this topic. So if you're interested, uh, feel free to check it out. Uh, it has like, a bunch of demos and some of the demos we saw here as well. And well, that's all. Thank you all. And see you later at the break. <laughs>